Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. So today we are sitting down and we are reviewing a brand new brand that has popped up. Love & Hollow is like a smaller indie brand and they released like a sister brand under them called Clover. And they were generous enough to send over a PR package for me to test out and it has a lot of goodies here. So that is what we're going to be doing today, testing out the brand new Clover by Clove & Hollow. Before we get started, don't forget I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday for you guys and lately a lot more than that because your girl is on a film and roll and I love it. It is so much fun. If you like this video while you're watching it, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. It really does help my channel out. And other than that, if you're excited and you want to see my first impressions on a brand new brand, then let's go ahead and get started. So like I said in the intro, Cloven Hollow is more of like a smaller sort of indie brand. I don't know if a lot of you guys are really going to know about them because they are so small. I know about them because they reached out probably about a year and a half, two years ago or so and sent me some products in PR. I am an affiliate with them and since then I have also gone on to purchase products with my own money. So I have known about Cloven Hollow for a while. I really enjoy Cloven Hollow and they released a kind of like smaller sister brand. So I think essentially the point of Clover and releasing Clover is that it is a more affordable like option for you guys. And I know with Clove and Hollow, the original brand, they are very stringent and very strict about what ingredients they include and what products they create and what goes in them and all of that. And I think that they are still doing that with Clover, but I think they're just a little more lenient with the ingredients. So that way they can pump out products a little bit faster. They can make them a little bit more affordable for you guys. It's all under the same umbrella, the same owner, all of the above. It's just kind of like a side brand, if that makes any sense. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't seen a ton of people really trying to review this brand. I started watching Alexa Blake's video on it, and in her intro, she said that she had a couple misses, and I went ahead and paused it, and I was like, okay, I don't want to be swayed by someone else's opinion, if that makes sense, so I pause that for now. I'm going to go back and watch the rest of it after this review, but I wanted to have like an unbiased first impressions. I will go ahead and have Alexa's video linked down below for you in case you want to check it out. They launched a lot. Like I almost have a full face of makeup here to try out for you guys. And I am really, really excited. So on their website, on their like about me section, it says, hi, we're kind of obsessed with you and we hope you are too. Clover is a reflection of all the things that make you, you. Your attitude, your values, your sense of adventure. That's why we developed a sustainable, ethically and consciously made made makeup line that's like nothing else out there. We're giving you insane pigmentation, stellar performance, skin enhancing clean ingredients, and crush worthy colors. At a price point that says, yes, I will spring for the extra guac. How cute. I always get guac at Chipotle. I don't care how much it costs. They could literally make that like $10 and I would still, still get the extra guac. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of like talk to you about the products as we go. So they did not have a primer. So I'm gonna forgo the primer for today, which I like never do, but that's fine. So the first thing that they launched is their Skin is In Serum Foundation. They went ahead and sent over two shades. They sent over two and three. It says it's a lightweight serum foundation with a biddable medium coverage and a dewy radiant finish. So I definitely enjoy that. It says apply to prep skin with clean fingertips, buffing brush, or stippling sponge. Layer until desired cover is reached. So it comes in a little tube like this. I'm not gonna lie, I really, really love this like lavender color story. I think that's super cute. And they carry it along to all their other products you will see as I continue talking about them. So let me do swatches really quick of both of these. Okay, so here we have two and here we have three. And actually, I feel like three is gonna be a way better match for me than two is. I feel like two looks a little bit too like orange or yellow tony, and this looks a little bit more neutral. So I'm gonna surprise myself and go in with three. So I'm just going to squeeze out a little bit onto the back of my hand and dot it on my face and go from there. Oh yeah, I actually think that looks like a pretty good sheen match for sure. So this retails for $22, which I feel like is a pretty good price point, and you end up getting 30 milliliters or 31.8 grams. I don't know what that is in ounces. <laughs> I know that a typical foundation size is one fluid ounce, but it also looks like it comes in 14 shades. And I feel like the shade range looks pretty uh, decent. I'm gonna try to pop up pictures here of the shade ranges for you guys so you can see, but I feel like it goes from pretty light to pretty deep, so that's good. So this is blending out very nicely. Alrighty, I got that all blended in and I'm not gonna lie, I'm like super impressed by this. I think this is very beautiful. It says it's a medium coverage, which 
I mean, I guess like you can still see some of my imperfections, but this has way more coverage than I was expecting it to have. And it looks like really good on my skin. For not wearing any sort of primer under it, it's not making my skin look dry anywhere. It blended in very nicely. Um, it, it is a little bit dry on my forehead, but I've been having some like problems with my forehead. I had to like exfoliate last night because my forehead was looking so just dry and weird. It is emphasizing my pores a tiny bit here. So next time I use this, I would probably go in with my Tarte uh, Timeless Smoothing Primer in my T-zone, but this looks, I'm like way, I like this way more than I was anticipating liking this, I'm not gonna lie. So the next thing that they sent over is their Camo Cover Concealer. Not to be confused with the e.l.f. Camo Concealer. <laughs> this says it's a high coverage concealer with a skin-like satin finish to easily camouflage in perfections, which I need that. Again, they sent over two and three. It says dot onto skin where extra coverage is needed and blend out with a clean fingertips, brush, or sponge. So basically the same thing as the foundation. It looks like this. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. It is literally like a mini version of the foundation. Stop it. Like mom and daughter. <laughs> I love that. That is so, that's adorable. I don't know why I think that's so stinging cute, but I do. I will say it is pretty interesting. Like it looks like this. It's a little squeezy tube, which like that's kind of normal for foundations but for concealers i don't know i haven't seen too too many concealers have this sort of applicator so it just like squeezes out like that i don't love that but again it's not the end of the world this is very thick oh my goodness this is super super thick so again here we have two and here we have three again i'm gonna go in with three instead i feel like two just like the foundation has a way more of like a yellowy undertone and three is way more neutral. So I do have the Cloven Hollow Precision Buffer uh, Concealer Brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that with the concealer just to see how it applies. <laughs> and I'm just going to dab it in, tap off the excess on the side and go in. Mm, okay, it has really good coverage, I will say that. It definitely covered up like all my bags, uh, but it looks, at least right now, it looks very like thick under on my under eye. So I'm gonna go in with a sponge to see if I can alleviate that, make it look a little less thick and cakey under there. So that helped a little bit, but then I feel like it took away some of the coverage. So for this eye, I'm just going to dab on a little bit and then just blend it in with my sponge. Okay, it's not terrible. It's not, definitely not my favorite concealer I've ever tried. I'm just gonna try to add a tiny bit more and see what happens. It's just like super thick. So I'm like, I'm not loving that. I'm gonna see if it can cover up this little guy right here. I'm just gonna dab a little bit on my sponge. Oh, okay, well that covered that up really nicely. Gonna go in like all my other spots that the foundation didn't cover. Okay, so I mean, it's not terrible. It's not the worst concealer I think I've ever tried. It's just looking, like I said, just thick and a little cakey and a little bit drying on my under eyes, if you guys can see. It's definitely creasing already, but every concealer creases on me, so I'm not mad about that. But it did cover up this little guy pretty easily and it blended in nicely. I don't know, I feel like that's a so-so for now. So I forgot to tell you, but the concealer retails for $18 and again, has 14 shades it looks like i feel like just like the foundation it goes from fairly light to fairly deep um off camera i did a couple of things i went ahead and set under my eyes and in my t-zone with the cover fx perfect setting powder i just went in with a cream bronzer i used my elf putty bronzer in the shade tan lines i'm just like obsessed with this guy i've used it like three or four days in a row and i just really love it so the next item we have to talk about is their blush okay so i thought that these were powder blushes at first but they are liquidy balmy blushes so it says a creamy silky blush that melts into skin for a weightless flush apply a small amount to the cheeks and blend layer until desired pigment is achieved so they set over two shades for me to try so again they have the lavender color packaging like everything else and then on the back it says that's on the back Emily. on the back it says the shade with like the shade color which i think is really nice so they sh sent over heartthrob which looks like this and then also juiced which looks like this. So both of those are really beautiful. Let me swatch them for you. Oh wow, they're like super emollient. That is crazy. Wow, okay. I'm assuming they're gonna have a very dewy sort of finish to them. Okay, so here we have Heartthrob and here we have Juiced. Both of those look very, very beautiful. Like I'm impressed with both of those shades. Let me try to blend them out a little bit to see what they would look like. 
Yeah, both of those are absolutely stunning. <laughs> so these blushes retail for $18, and it looks like there is one other shade that they didn't send over called Boardwalk, which looks like a little bit deeper of a more like orangey ready kind of shade. I don't know which one I wanna go into. They're both so pretty. I'm just gonna go ahead and try out Heartthrob. I think that looks like a really pretty pink shade and I have like this pinky white shirt on. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna use my e.l.f. 105 stipple brush. I'm just going to, ooh man, that looks very pigmented. I'm gonna stipple a little bit off on my hand to not go overboard. And then we're just going to put this on the cheek. That's a really pretty shade, I like that. Ooh. Okay, so these definitely, definitely have like a pretty dewy finish to them. If you can see, my cheek is a shine in there. I don't like dislike that. I think that's really pretty. It feels a little tacky. Yeah, it feels pretty tacky, so I don't know like how long this would last or if you have your hair done and it's windy, it might get stuck in it, which would could be kind of annoying, but yeah, I actually, I don't mind that. I'm actually really excited that I have this juice shade too. I think that that would be really pretty. I did go a little overboard, so I'm just gonna tap my foundation sponge. Yeah, okay, so I don't have like too much of a opinion on this yet because I just applied it, but it looks pretty. It applied nice and easy. You guys saw how quickly it blended out and there is pigmentation there without being too aggressive. All right, then they also sent over two of their glow stick illuminators. This is a balmy illuminating stick to achieve a glowy, glassy skin. Twist up as needed and either apply it directly from the tube or use your fingertips or a brush to tap onto skin wherever glow is desired. So let's open these up. So these retail for $16 and they have these two shades that they sent over. The one is a more goldy tone. It has that like cap on it, which is nice so it doesn't dry out. So this is Clio. It's more of a goldy tone highlight. Ooh, that really is super balmy. And then we have glass slipper. Oh, that just like looks clear. Yeah, there we go. It's like right here. Um, hmm. I don't know. I don't know about these. <laughs> I feel like this type of product I don't typically tend to enjoy just because they are pretty balmy. Maybe I will try one on each side. I feel like they're not gonna be too, too different. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna, so this is Clio. I'm gonna take Clio and I'm just gonna take my finger and try to tap it on. Okay, so let's do that. I mean, I'm already looking pretty glowy, but let's add Cleo. All right, maybe I will stripe it straight on my face. I'm a little apprehensive to do that because I don't want it to like pull up my foundation. Ooh, yeah, okay, Shh, that's intense. It definitely gives like a wet effect for sure, which is nice. I feel like this is something that would be super sticky though, which I don't, I don't think I would like that. So let's try this one. This is a glass slipper. Let's try that on this side. Ooh, you can definitely see that there. Yeah, so that definitely lifted up my foundation. Shoot, okay. Let me tap on a little bit more foundation and let's try that with my finger instead. So yeah, these don't look super, super different. Um, I mean, this one is supposed to be gold. I guess it has a little bit more of a gold hint. This is definitely not my favorite favorite product, but it's not terrible. I mean, it is giving me like a nice wet look. It is pretty, but yeah, I don't know. This is definitely not my favorite. <laughs> so next I sent over their Plush Pigment Stick Eyeshadow. I'm telling you guys, there's like so much to this line. It's crazy. This is a blendable cream eyeshadow stick that deposits rich, lustrous pigment in one swipe. It says swipe stick directly onto lid or use a flat shader brush to deposit color before lightly buffing out the edges. It can be used alone or as a base to make a powder eyeshadow pop. Alrighty, so again, they sent over two shades. So these retail for $16 and it looks like there are five of them. And again, I have two of the shades. I have Showstopper and Revolution. So let me swatch them for you. Okay, so here we have Showstopper and here we have Revolution. I'm not gonna lie, I am not a shadow stick kind of gal. I like never reach for these. And these felt kind of dry when I was just swatching them, especially this darker uh, Revolution shade. I'm just gonna go really, really simple and easy. And I'm just going to apply the show Showstopper shade on my lid. I'm just gonna swipe it on and see what happens. I don't have anything on it besides that concealer that I put up earlier. I didn't use my MAC Paint Pot. I didn't set it or anything. I just kind of want to see what it looks like on its own. So I'm just going to swipe this all over. 
Yeah, so it feels kind of like dry on my lid when I'm swiping it all over as well. I'm just gonna brush to blend this out. Yeah, there's not too, too much pigmentation there. Let's try to get a flat brush like they said, and I guess I'll try to get it off here and then pack it on my eyelid. I don't know if that's what they mean. Nothing's really coming off. Okay, don't like it that way. <laughs> Let's go back to swiping it on my eyelid. I mean, the good thing about something like this, it is a nice like one and done. Like I just swiped, yeah, swiped <laughs> that on my eyelid and it took like two seconds and I do have like a little something something on my eye. It makes me look a little bit more put together. It's not like I have like a blank eyelid, but I don't think I would ever reach for this again. And it honestly, feels like pretty sticky on my eyelids. I am going to add a little bit of that darker shade just to see like what it would look like. I'm just gonna try to layer it just on my lid here towards the bottom to give me a little extra dimension. A little bit under my, like under here. I feel like it's already creasing too, so. Yeah, these are definitely not my favorite. Nope, we're gonna keep it going because we still, believe it or not, we still have three more products to try. So <laughs> the next thing, um, let's just stick with eyes and we'll go ahead and try their mascara. So this is their Max Out Mascara. It's a volumizing mascara. It says, a volumizing mascara with a double-sided wand that delivers thick, dramatic lashes without smudging or flaking. So they sit over black and brown. Clove and Hollow has a mascara. I think it's called their like Lash Slick or something like that, that they sent me in PR. And I hate to say this, but that was the worst mascara I've ever tried in my whole life. It did nothing to my lashes. It was a super watery formula. And because of that, it kind of just got everywhere, like all over my lids and like below. But then also at the same time, looked like I absolutely did not apply any mascara on my lashes at all. Like it did nothing for them. So I'm hoping that this is better. I am going to go ahead and try the black shade. So this retails for $18 and it just has these two shades. Let's look at the wand first. I don't know what it meant, double sided wand. Okay, okay, I understand. So if you can see, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, these spikies are like a lot farther apart on the top and then these spikies on the bottom are a lot closer together. So I'm guessing that that would just help separate your lashes and that kind of stuff. I don't really know. So I'm gonna curl my lashes. All right, and let's go in with the side. Okay, so when I'm like getting out there, there's so much product on the wand. I'm just gonna try to wipe some of it off. I'm gonna go in the side that has the spikes that are farther apart first and start applying it that way. Okay, and now I'm gonna go into the side with them closer together and see what that does. <laughs> okay, so this is a very wet formula, I can tell. Okay, so this isn't like my least favorite mascara I've ever tried. I will say it already has like came down here because it got on my lashes and I look down because I have eyes that look around and um, it's already kind of getting everywhere. It's definitely better than the Cloven Hollow one that I tried a couple years ago, but it's just not really like doing much for my lashes. Like it's not really holding a curl too, too well right now. Kind of like clumping them together a little bit and it's just not like giving me a ton of volume or anything like that. Let me see if I can maybe like build it up a tiny bit. But I'm gonna take the little skinny side and try to like maybe build up and see what happens. I think it made it look more curled, but it also I feel like made it look more clumpy. So again, not the worst mascara I've ever tried, but definitely not my favorite. I will try to remember to put in the description box like a wear update. I'll try to put in the description box a wear update of everything. Maybe I should just do a wear test. I should do that. That's what I'll do. I'll just do a wear test. So I will just come back on at the end of the night and show you how everything wore. Smart thinking, Emily. Smart thinking. So yeah, so I will do that. I just decided right now, this is now turning into a wear test. Um, but I just feel like, I don't know. I feel like this, oh yeah. That is like so stinking wet. I mean, I know I just applied it, but wow. I feel like this is the type of mascara that's going to take forever to dry. So moving on. <laughs> they also sent over eyeliners, which these are potted eyeliners. I have not used a potted eyeliner like this in years. I think I've only ever used one and it was like the Maybelline like tattoo liner that 
everyone I feel like has tried. So this is their All Lined Up Eyeliner, a pigmented gel cream eyeliner that applies like a dream and dries down for all day wear. So again, they sent over black and brown. I will swatch these for you guys, but I don't think I'm going to put them on my eyes. I'm sorry. Mm, sorry. <laughs> so this is the brown one and the black one. Interesting. So the brown one seems like it's really like moussey and whippy and the black one seems like it's really like jelly. So they seem like completely different formulas. That's interesting. Maybe because of different colors. Let me look up this. So this retails for $16 and it just comes in these two shades that I have. I don't have like an eyeliner brush because I never use like gel potted eyeliners like this. So I'm just going to take this little baby brush. Oh wow. Okay, so that's like really rich and intense and like deep. I just wiped off the brush. Yeah, the black is like, this is so, they're completely different formulas. So the black is like really jelly and not like moussey, but it is still like really dark and pigmented. That's actually really pretty. It looks like the brown dry down. I'm gonna let these dry down on my hand for a minute and then see if they smudge. So next we have two lip products. We have a lip jelly lip gloss and then also a matte lipstick. So I'm gonna try the glosses first. This is their Super Slick Lip Jelly Lip Gloss, a non-sticky lip gloss with a wet slick finish and sheer hint of color for the perfect juicy pout. Use wand to apply directly to lips. All right, so they again sent over two shades. So these retail for $14 and it comes in three different shades. It looks like the only one they didn't send me is Smitten and it's like a really orangey shade. So I'm going to wipe off the little bit of chapstick I have on and we're going to start off with Go To, which is like the clear shade. Oh, that's a huge Dofa app clear, holy moly. So not a lot comes off on the Dofa applicator, even though it's very large. So I'm gonna dip back in and like put more on. Oh, I can like taste it. It's like in the back of my throat. Okay, so it's, okay, it's nice. It's just a gloss. I don't know if there's anything like spectacular about it. It's not insanely glossy. It's not like blanking out the lines on my lips like a lot of my other glosses that I have do. It's shiny, but not the shiniest ever, but it's not like thick or gloopy or like, stringy at all so that's nice but i like hate how it tastes oh that's gross so this is go to and then we're going to try on skyline i think skyline looks really pretty it looks like a really like nice pinky magenta -y shade Ooh yeah again i'm gonna dip back in go in for a second layer okay so that's really pretty i like that i think this would look really pretty over lipsticks or like a lip liner because it has a hint of color to it, but not anything too crazy. I definitely like this one more than the go-to shade. So this is Skyline. Okay, the last product we have to try. Thanks for bearing with me, guys. I know this is probably, this might have been like a really long video. I can't tell how much I'm gonna be able to edit it down, but um, yeah, there's been, they just released so many things I wanted to try for you. So then the last thing we have to try is their Comfy Matte Lipstick. This is a plush pigmented matte lipstick that glides on easily with a comfortable velvet finish. Again, they sent over two shades. These retail for $16 and it looks like it comes in five shades total. So the two shades they sent over, oh, this one does have a sticker, shoot. Oh, is it down here? Hold on, I think it's in the package. It's in the package, I think. Let me try to get it out. <laughs> Got it, okay, I'm gonna stick it back on. Perfect, okay. So they sit over Blissful and Retro. Retro looks like a very hot red shade. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's try Retro on first. So this is supposed to be a matte formula. Okay, so it's not super pigmented, if you guys can tell. Yeah, I had to like really layer that up to make it look like this. It's a pretty shade, it's a nice, red shade. I wouldn't call this a matte finish though. Like it's very, very shiny, maybe because it's supposed to be like a comfortable matte, but this is definitely not matte. Definitely shiny, but this is pretty. I don't think if I'm going to reach for a red lipstick that I would reach for this because I, if I'm going to wear a red lipstick, I want it to be a matte liquid lipstick. So it just doesn't go anywhere. Like I can see this smearing all over the place, getting all my teeth. It's, I don't think I'd reach for this very much. So again, this is retro. And then we're gonna try on the next one. Let me wipe this off. Okay, so this is Blissful. All right, so again, kind of like the eyeliners, this seems to be a completely different formula 
but it's not. It's both their comfy matte lipstick. Like this is way less shiny, if you guys can see. If you would have blindfolded me and asked me to try both of these on and asked if it was the same lipstick formula, I would definitely not have said yes. That's interesting, but I actually really like this color. It shows up lighter on my lips, I feel like, than it does in the tube slightly, but I don't mind that. I think this is a really pretty like pinky berry shade. I think this would be really pretty for the fall time. I definitely enjoy this shade and formula, even though it's the same formula over the red one. So now that the eyeliner looks like it's gonna be dry, yeah, so I can still smudge it. I mean, I don't know. It sat here for a while drying and it definitely can be smudged. So I feel like it might smudge on your eyes. I'm sorry I'm not trying it today. Maybe, oh, should I try it today? Okay, I will. All right, you, you twisted my arm. I will, I'll try it today. I'm gonna try the brown one though, not the black one. Um, and I'm just gonna put a tiny bit on because it looks, it seems like the mascara is finally dry. Oh, it's pretty pigmented on the eyes, which is nice. Well, I tried to do a baby wing and I actually hate how that looks. <laughs> it's like not sharp at all. Oh, there we go. Oh, my fingernail fixed it. That's not bad. Those wings are definitely not the same. All right, I'm glad I tried that. That's actually not that bad. Okay, so I'm going to finish up my makeup really quickly. I don't really have too, too much else to do. I'm gonna go do my brows. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna do my brows. I think that's all I got going on. And I'll come back and tell you my final thoughts. So for my brows, all I used was my Milani Weekend Brow and my Benefit 24-Hour uh, Brow Setter. And then I did go ahead and take my powder brush with no powder on it, just whatever is residual in it because I never clean it. And I did like tap over my face um, because it just was really, really dewy. So just to be fully transparent, the mascara looks like it's already flaking on me. So that's fun. So I'm just going to like really quickly, really quickly, because I feel like this uh, video is going to be very long, go over my thoughts on the products. So the skin is in serum foundation. I liked this way more than I thought I was going to. I think it looks very beautiful on my skin right now. I'm excited to keep trying this for sure. The concealer, um, it doesn't look too bad right now. It just still looks kind of like dry and caking under my eyes like it did earlier. And it's still like creasing a little bit even though I powdered it. So I don't know how much use I'm gonna get out of these. I'm not going to lie. The blushes, I only tried the one obviously, but I think it is very beautiful. I think it's looking very nice, pigmented. It looks pretty on the skin. It was pretty dewy. So like I said, I put that slight layer of powder over. So we shall see how this wears throughout the day. But so far, I think it's nice. The highlighters, I really, this is just not like my type of jam. I really don't know how much use I'm going to get out of either of these. They look nice. They look pretty, but I don't think I will use these very often very much, unfortunately. Mascara, I don't really care for. It's just not doing much for my lashes at all. And like I said, it's kind of seems to be already flaking. I will say though, because the gel liners and the lipsticks made it seem like they were two separate formulas and they weren't, I'm kind of excited to try the brown mascara just because I didn't like the black one, like the brown one could be a totally different formula from what I've gotten from the other products in this line. So we shall see. I'm not going to open it yet. I have too many mascaras open off the right now, sadly. But yeah, I just don't think I really care for the mascara. The liner, I like it. I mean, we'll have to see how it wears throughout the day, but... It was nice and pigmented and glided on very nicely. The lip glosses, I probably will never use this one, I'm not gonna lie, but I do really like this like watermelony punchy color. I think it's very pretty. And then the lipsticks, again, I'll probably never use this retro red color, but this blissful color is very, very pretty. And I think that was all the new items that I tried from Clover. So yeah, like I said, I like decided earlier on a whim that this is going to be a wear test. So yeah, we shall see how this wears throughout the day. So this is what I've got going on right now. I know this isn't like the best lighting. It is 2.31. I didn't expect this to turn into a wear test or I would have started this video way earlier in the day. So it's not gonna be like a super, super long wear test, but yeah, I will come back on at the end of the day and show you how everything wore and all of that. And we'll wrap up the video then. See you then. Alrighty guys, I am back. It is now 10.07 if you can see right there. So I finished up my makeup around like 2.30. So I figured I kind of like applied the foundation and stuff probably around two. So I still ended up getting in an eight hour wear test. Um, yeah, so I'm not really gonna like go over my final thoughts again, cause I already did that. And I don't think really any of my thoughts have changed, but I just kind of wanted to show you how everything wore. So as you can see, 
I am doing. Like, shiny. But the foundation didn't really break up too, too much. I still think it looks really good on my skin. I think if I prepped it with a good primer and actually like fully set it down and use like a setting spray and all that, I didn't use a setting spray. I think it would hold up a little bit better. Not that it didn't like hold up well because it didn't really seem to break up or anything on me, but I just think it would be a little less um, dewy. The, what else? The concealer looks pretty atrocious on my under eyes. I kind of figured it would. I don't really like it at all. The eyeshadow is really, really greasy. Like really greasy. It looks pretty terrible. Let me see if I can like tap it out and try to fix it. Um, I mean, yeah, a little bit, but now it's just kind of like gone. So yeah, don't really love that. The uh, liner is just kind of faded off a little bit. So that's kind of gone. And the mascara, I mean, it looks pretty much the same as it did, but it is flaking down below a little bit. I will try to remember to put in the description box how it washed off. I'm like really big about that, how mascaras like wash off. If they're a pain to wash off and they are so hard to get off and then you have raccoon eyes and stuff, I, I'm not about it. So I'll try to remember to add that in the description box. The blush is still thriving. Like, look at that. It is still on. It has barely faded at all. It looks beautiful and then the lipstick it is completely gone however we ate tacos and i don't think that any lip product would survive through that um but it did last for quite a few hours before that i think the only other thing i had to talk about was the highlight so they're still pretty beaming this was the cleo side which was the more gold side i definitely think that that one held up a little bit better and then this side which was the glass sl slipper side i mean you can still see it but i feel like that one did fade a little tiny bit so this is how everything wore and yeah, I mean, I feel like pretty much all of the products that I said I liked earlier, I still kind of like, and the products I said I didn't really like earlier, they didn't really seem to wear well. So that was it. That was my first impressions and eight hour wear test on the new Clover by Cloven Hollow. Let me know down below in the comments if you plan on trying this brand, if you have ever heard of them, if you want to try them, if you're gonna pick anything up, all of the above. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much, you're awesome and I love you. Please subscribe if you have not yet, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye guys.